All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man, Jay Will. So let's just face it here. The iPhone 10 is not for everyone, and it is an expensive piece of equipment. I think we've kind of got that down already. So when you hear people complaining about the price at this point, I think they just might be trying to find something to complain about. Even myself. I don't like the price. That is clearly the elephant in the room. Uh, but we've got to move past that. And I think that I have. And the reason I say that is because I'm really enjoying this device. I really didn't think that I would enjoy it so much, but I'll be honest, I still have my main SIM card in this device. Now, the device isn't all roses. There's some things that I've, you know, that might have changed since I first got in the phone as far as my feelings about it. Um, but I've had this since it launched, and now it is the 25th of November, and... I'm still enjoying it actually. Now, again, some things have changed since I got it. My feelings have changed since I got it. I gave you a two week review, or I think I gave you a review like two weeks ago or 10 days. I don't know how long it's been, but it's been, a, it's been over 10 days or so, almost two weeks since I gave you the full review of this phone. And so I wanted to come back and visit it again that I'm more than I'm probably over a month or right at about a month with it, I think. And I got to tell you, like I said, I'm still enjoying it. It's still good. We actually finally got the other one that came in. We finally got it. So everybody's got an iPhone 10. Well, it's good. And like I said, it's an expensive piece of hardware, and not everybody's going to agree with this video. Some people are going to continue to badger it and say it's this high price over crap. That's done. Get past that. I have the product and have been using it. Now, some people might be on the fence about it, but updates are coming in strong. When something goes wrong, Apple jumps right out there a lot faster than Android and fixes it. Now, that could be a good or a bad thing, but the fact is, this phone has a lot of pluses. Now, I recently released a video showing how fantastic these cameras are on the rear, and I stand firm on that by saying these are some of the best cameras ever. This phone shoots in 4K at 60 frames per second, and it is absolutely stunning footage that comes about from this. I'm just shocked at how well it produces the footage from these rear cameras. The stabilization on these is right on par with the Galaxy Note 8's stabilization. These phones both have dual optical image stabilization, and they are both fantastic. Galaxy Note's a beast. This phone right here has fantastic cameras. The footage that comes from them is unreal how beautiful it is. It's just crazy. So I was testing these out again and I said I gotta put another video up because I like to shoot the sky. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know I like to shoot trees and sky and just nature stuff. And um, it feels good to have a phone in your pocket that, that produces 4K at 60 frames per second. Now again, I don't shoot, I thought I would shoot a lot of 4K at 60 frames per second when I first got this phone, but it turns out I don't like to do it for the channel. And I just want to go ahead and give you just regular footage, however I'm giving it to you at the time. 1080p, 60 frames per second. This video will probably be in 1080p, I don't know. Um, but I can't stress it enough. If you haven't used the iPhone 8 Plus, and I use that reference because the iPhone 8 Plus also has fantastic cameras. But these cameras appear to be a little bit more stable with the optimization because it has dual optical image stabilization for photos. It just turns out really nice, and the telephoto lens on here is extremely useful, I think. Um, so that's the first thing that I've grown to really enjoy after having this phone since launch. Um, the cameras, I find myself using them a lot. Now, with that being said, the front camera is not very good. It tends to overexpose when it has whites. When I have whites behind me or the light color walls in my office. Now, just so you, just so you know... The color of the walls in my office is not white. They're an off-white or a tan color, and the door is white. That's always behind me. That door is white, and the walls are more of a cream color, a, a really off-white tan color. So this front camera, for some reason, indoors cannot handle good footage in my office. Now, outdoors is absolutely great with colors and it pops with greenery and things like that and just the sky it just looks pretty good outside it's just not as good as i would want it to be you know because then i start to think about the price but then i forget about it because i realize there's other things about the phone that i like and so i can deal with this kind of crappy camera on the front um 
you know, and have a fantastic setup on the rear. Now, also, another thing about this camera, in on the rear camera, I've, tr I've used this rear camera for some videos, but I use it for videos during the daytime. And, and then when I use this phone with artificial lighting, some, it just doesn't come out right sometimes. So I end up switching back to the U11 or switching back to a camera. Like, I'm using an actual camera right now, my Samsung camera. Um, and... I just end up switching back to that. For some reason, if I'm not shooting in really, really, really bright settings, not, the Apple doesn't have a pro mode or anything like that. It wants, it wants to do it all itself, and I'm perfectly fine with that. But I want it to be able to shoot in this setting right now, which is late in the evening, and I don't have any LEDs going, no artificial lighting or nothing. Well, I do have LEDs, I, I should say that, because I've changed all the light bulbs in my office to very high-intense LEDs, so I don't have to use a studio light if I don't want to. You guys should think about investing in that. The bulbs are like $20 a piece, but it's totally worth I mean, I know my studio setup is like $80 for the entire set, but the bulbs are like $20 a piece, and they're totally worth it. They are long-lasting, and they help me not to use studio light. So, in the iPhone, in this setting, the cameras don't do that well. Now, off from that, the hardware here is good. It's not extremely premium. So my intentions was to buy a carbon fiber skin for this thing, but I got something better coming. Woo, woo, yeah. So until then, I bought a carbon fiber ultra thin case. That's what I did. And that's what I've been using around the house or sometimes when I leave the house. Or I'll put my Berkeley case on, which is high quality premium leather. Um, and it feels good. So the hardware itself, though, the stainless steel, while it looks good, it's not the best feel in hand, and the glass is starting to get on my nerves with the slipperiness, so I, I, I've been actually wearing this one around the house, this ultra-thin one, but again, I'm getting ready to solve for that. Whoop, whoop, you'll see a video soon. Uh, but, you know, as far as that goes, the phone is it's a nice, good si it's a good size, and I think that's why I'm sticking with this one around the house and using it more. Um... And that's kind of why I've been using a lot more, you know, as far as the, the hardware goes. It's premium hardware, but I don't like the slipperiness, and I'm going to fix that. Now, convenience for me. Convenience for the iPhone 10 with me, super nice. When I plug this up to the USB port in my car, I mean, I have, I have we have Apple Music, so I can listen to whatever I want. Um, it's just convenient for me. With the Bluetooth, like, I actually leave my Bluetooth on all day. I think I just turned it off. Oh, it's still on. Okay, so I still have it on. But I leave my Bluetooth on all the time. I have Bluetooth speakers set up throughout the house. And I have Bluetooth headphones in certain places. And I have Bluetooth headphones in cars, different ones in different cars. Point is, no matter where I go, I'm always using Bluetooth. And when I power it on, it pairs super fast, no problems, and everything's really convenient. Now, even if I don't want to plug this phone into my car... Um, when I get in the car, and I say this because some other phones have given me problems with Bluetooth for some reason, and I, I don't know what it is, but when I get in the car with this phone, within a matter of a minute or so, the car's starting up and I'm getting out of the garage, I'm already hooked to Bluetooth, and I can just press my Apple Music, and then I'm, I'm off to the races, and everything is good. Um, I haven't used Apple Pay but once or twice on this phone. Uh, it just works with the, the facial recognition, and you just tap it on there, and it's done. But it does work really, really fast. Um, and I, I think that's another plus. When it comes to the convenience factor, Apple products are really, really premium. However, Apple Pay is nowhere near on par with Samsung's Pay. Samsung Pay is the best option outside of Android Pay. Samsung Pay, to me, is the best because it works everywhere. Apple Pay, Apple Pay is still really, really limited, and I don't like that. So... Convenience factor for me, it's really good. Uh, I've been playing with the Animojis more with like the granddaughter or just sending them to my wife or just sending them to all the, I shouldn't say kids because they're adults pretty much. Um, but yeah, everybody's kind of feeling the Animojis. You can actually send the Animojis to any device and it's more fun. Just a little toy to play with, I guess, with, with the devices. And it's, it's fun. Um, I like that this phone has stereo speakers. These are some of the loudest stereo speakers I have ever heard on a smartphone. They are super loud. Uh, super clear also. Very clear. Phone calls on this thing over T-Mobile Network suck. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's no other way to say it. Uh, over time, they, they suck. The, the phone sucks. I, don't, I was at the outlet mall in San Marcos, and 
I had no service. Even though I had full LTE up there, fix it T-Mobile, there's no service. I went to the outlet mall in Round Rock today, same thing, full LTE signal, no service. Had to whip out my trusty Cricut SIM card to get me through that experience. It should not be that way. Ugh, I don't like that. I don't like that I have to carry another another company around. And, you know, I, had, I, I posted a video saying I left T-Mobile. I still had multiple lines with T-Mobile. And what I did was I switched one of my main SIM cards back to T-Mobile. And I still have, I have two other, I have one other one over here on Cricut, which I use daily for the SIM card. I need that good phone service everywhere. Internet speeds in my house suck with this phone. And there's other, I can put this same SIM card in another phone and it works great. It works flawlessly. But for some reason in this phone, the signal sucks. The internet service sucks. I have to, I have to leave it on Wi-Fi most of the time. I don't like to leave it on Wi-Fi. Because, I mean, I have unlimited internet services through, through, through all the carriers. And it just kind of sucks, man. It shouldn't be this bad. You know, it doesn't matter if you're saying, oh, I got 100, we cover 160 million people. If I can't get good service in my, look at this, it's ridiculous. Two and three down in my house is horrible. And the cricket plan that I'm on is giving me what I'm supposed to get. I'm capped at eight megabytes or whatever it is, and it actually works that way. So let me turn off Wi-Fi. I'm capped at the at the eight or whatever it is, and I actually get that. Sometimes I get more. I'll get like nine or and then sometimes I'll get twenty. Like I was just saying, I'll sometimes I'll get more. Um, but sometimes I'll get like twenty up. And I've checked with several people in Cricket, and they said, we don't, we don't um, throttle the uploads. You upload all you want. And that's what I'm getting. I'm getting consistency with Cricket and not with T-Mobile. You know what I mean? It's, that's not a good look. This is horrible right here. Come on, T-Mobile. Fix this, man. Fix this. Great phone on a sucky network, man. <laughs> so, I mean, it, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it's a sucky network because it's not. With this phone, it appears to be it appears to suck. So I have to keep Wi-Fi turned on if I want to do a lot of streaming and things like that. And that's just how it, that's just what, I've just been dealing with it, man. You you can only do so much because I'm going to use the phone. And um, but other than that, you know, phone calls do work well. SMS works, but in certain areas, this particular device does not work. And it's crazy because if I'm using the essential phone, man. This thing is rolling along, rolling along, good internet signal, good everything. I, I don't know. Same thing. Galaxy Note, rolling along, no problems. I don't know. But I wanted to give you a, a recap and a follow-up. Everything is great. It's not roses, but it's good. It's doable. Uh, I don't plan on getting rid of this phone. Um, I, 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 had a, I was upset about what the, the time I had to wait to get it. And the other one just came in, so we have a couple of them now. And um, I'm just going to use this bad boy to f at least feel like I get my money's worth until I decide I want to go start using my 8 Plus again. And I doubt that that will probably happen because I like this beautiful screen. I like that it appears to be a full screen here. I'm really enjoying it. There, I have other phones that are like 18 by 9 that appear to be uh, full screen as well. And... It's it's a good look. I really like this 18 by 9 ratio. This is a Q6, and I am loving this phone, man. I just took my SIM card out of here recently and put it, or one of the SIM cards out of here and put it into another SIM, put it into another phone, and I am loving the Q6. The 18 by 9 ratio on here is fantastic. As you can see, it's the same size as the iPhone, pretty much, and, you know, that's just what it is. Just fabulous. It's, it's, I'm loving it, man. Uh, I've fallen in love with the 18 by 9 ratio, not because of this phone, because of several other phones like the uh, Essential phone and other phones that I have. The the Note actually made me get used to the 18 by 9 ratio. Simple things like that. So the iPhone 10 is good, man. I mean, it only has three gigs of RAM, but it has Apple's new AI, A11 chip. And if you've never played like the 3D gaming on here, the AR gaming, it is absolutely fabulous. You should do some AR gaming when you get a chance. It's, it's, I don't do a lot of games either, but. It's really good. So I did put up a video of the 4K 60 frames per second. So maybe I'll drop that that video in here, a little piece of it, so you can kind of get a get a uh, at the end of this video. But 
It's your man Jay Will. Kind of a lengthy video, but I wanted to give you some kind of update on how this phone has been doing. Uh, I've dropped it a few times, no problems. Um, the screen is good. I do have my tempered glass on there. And I keep it in the case when I leave the house, but around the house I'm kind of free in it, you know what I'm saying, swinging. And it's it's easy, man. It's it's good. I'm really enjoying it. I don't really do the wireless charging at all. You know, it's not really something that I'm doing. You know, I do that with the Note 8 because I have the fast charger right here. And, you know, I just popped the Note 8 on there. Uh, but, you know, other than that, this phone has been good, man. The battery life is sick on here. It is... <laughs> It is, the battery life is really good. Now, I have battery cases, but my Zero Lemon case broke. Uh, it was broken or something, so I had to switch it out, and I'm still waiting to get another one. Um, but without the Zero Lemon case, I really didn't need the Zero Lemon case. This case is that good. So, you know, it's just one of those things. So, this is good. Um, I like the iPhone 10. I've gone on record and said it multiple times. I really like it. I think it's a phone that... that I, I can't recommend it, recommend it because of the price, but if it was lower in price, I would tell several people don't buy any of the other iPhones below the eight, below the Apple iPhone eight because of the processing power. Those phones are good, um, but if you can get the ten, get the ten. If you're in the market for an iPhone, at least get the eight plus, and you'll be really happy because you'll get some of the camera features of this phone. So this is your man Jay Will. Just wanted to give you a follow up. You know, times change. At one minute I like something, but after using something for a while, you, you just don't know how you're going to feel after two to three months. So this is how I feel at this moment with this phone. And maybe when I revisit this in two more months or three more months, I'll feel completely different because something else will come along and sway me away from this one. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.